In Greek mythology gods were powerful and humans should be obedient. But was that always the case? In ancient times there was a beautiful lady called Arachne, meaning, spider, in Greek. She knew the art of loom very well and she weaved beautifully. She boasted that she could weave better than Athena, who was the patroness of the weaving art. She even dared to ask the goddess to a contest. Athena accepted and they began to weave. Athena weaved a representation of her fight with Poseidon over the naming of Athena. Arachne, on the other hand, weaved the naughty adventures of Zeus and the other gods of Olympus. Athena, angered by the hubris Arachne dared to show, transformed her into a spider and cursed her to be hanging from her web for the remainder of her life. In Greek mythology, Orpheus was the greatest lyre player in the world. He could charm rocks and rivers with his music. When Orpheus fell in love with Eurydice, he wooed her with his song. Their marriage was brief, however, as Eurydice was bitten by a viper and died shortly after. Devastated, Orpheus journeyed to the underworld to convince Hades and Persephone to return his bride to him. Orpheus managed to pass through Cerberus, the three-headed dog who was the guardian of the gates, by making him fall asleep with his music. When he played his lyre, the king and queen of the underworld were moved by his song, and they agreed to let Eurydice live again on one condition. She would follow him while walking out to the light from the darkness of the underworld, but he should not turn to look at her before she was out to the light. As they started ascending towards the living world, Orpheus began to think it might all be a trick, that the gods were just making fun of him and Eurydice was not really behind him. Unable to hear Eurydice's footsteps, Orpheus finally lost his faith and turned to look back, only a few meters away from the exit. Eurydice was in fact behind him, as a shade that would become flesh again when she was back into the light. After Orpheus looked at her, Eurydice's shade fell back into the darkness of the underworld, now trapped in Hades forever. Laius was the king of Thebes and married to Jocasta. Laius had received an oracle from Delphi saying that his son would kill him and marry his wife. When Jocasta gave birth, Laius tied the baby's ankles and ordered a shepherd servant to take it to the mountain and abandon it there to die. However, the shepherd took pity on the baby and passed it to another shepherd who gave it to the king of Corinth and his wife, who did not have any children and raised it as their own. They called the child Oedipus, meaning, swollen feet, in Greek. When Oedipus grew up, he traveled to Delphi where the oracle gave him the prophecy that he would kill his own father and marry his mother. Shocked by the words of Apollo, he did not return to Corinth so as to avoid his father and mother. As he was traveling near Thebes, Oedipus met Laius at a crossroads and killed him in a fight, without knowing he was his real father, thus fulfilling the first part of the prophecy. When he reached Thebes, he learned of Sphinx, a terrible monster that devoured anyone that did not solve its riddle. It was proclaimed that whoever managed to solve the riddle and kill the Sphinx, he would take the throne of Thebes by marrying Laius' widow, Jocasta. Oedipus was successful in solving the riddle and killing the Sphinx. He married Jocasta and together had four children. Little did he know that his children were also his siblings. While Oedipus was at the peak of his happiness, there was an epidemic in Thebes. Oedipus sought the advice of the Oracle of Delphi. The Oracle's answer was that in order to stop the epidemic, Laius' killer must be found and punished. The investigation that followed led Oedipus to the truth. Upon realizing the truth, Jocasta, his mother and wife, hanged herself. Oedipus then seized two pins from her dress and blinded himself with them. A Greek tragedy indeed. Hercules is the most famous hero of Greek mythology and well known for his twelve labors. He was a demigod, son of Zeus and alchemy. Hera, the wife of Zeus, hated Hercules and wanted to kill him. Driven mad by the goddess, Hercules killed his own sons by his wife Megara. After realizing what he did, he traveled to Delphi and asked Apollo how he could atone for his actions. Pythia, the oracle of Apollo, told him to go to Tyrans and serve his cousin, King Eurystheus, for twelve years. Eurystheus, loathing his cousin, set him to complete twelve impossible labors. He ordered him to 1 slay the Nemean lion, 2, slay the nine-headed Lernaean hydra, 3, capture the golden hind of Artemis, 4, capture the Aramanthian boar, 5, clean the Augean stables in a single day, 6, slay the Stymphalian birds, 7, capture the Cretan bull, 8, steal the mares of Diomedes, 9, obtain the girdle of Hippolyta, queen of the Amazons, 10, obtain the cattle of the monster Gerion, 11, 
steal the golden apples of the Hesperides, and 12. Capture and bring back Cerberus, the three-headed dog of Hades. Hercules managed to complete all 12 labors and free himself from the service of Eurystheus, having atoned for the killing of his sons. Many more adventures followed until he found a tragic death from his wife, Megara. Daphne was a naiad nymph in Greek mythology, the daughter of a river god. She was famous for being incredibly beautiful and for catching the eye of god Apollo. However, Daphne was determined to remain unmarried and untouched by a man for the rest of her life. According to Greek mythology, Apollo had been mocking the god of love, Eros. In retaliation, Eros fired two arrows, a golden arrow that struck Apollo and made him madly in love with Daphne, and a lead arrow that made Daphne hate Apollo. Under the spell of the arrow, Apollo continued to chase Daphne, but she continued to reject him. Apollo told Daphne that he would love her forever. Daphne turned to the river god, Peneus, and pleaded to him to free her from Apollo. In response, Peneus used metamorphosis to turn Daphne into a laurel tree. Apollo used his powers of eternal youth and immortality to make Daphne's laurel leaves evergreen. It is believed that Daphne had to sacrifice her body and turn into a tree, as this was the only way she could avoid Apollo's sexual advances. After Daphne had been transformed into a laurel, Apollo made the plant sacred and vowed to always wear it as clothing. Thus, in a way, Daphne stayed with Apollo forever. Pan was the god of fertility and the patron of shepherds and huntsmen in Greek mythology, he presided over all rural occupations, he was chief of the satyrs and head of all rural divinities. According to the common belief, he was the son of Hermes and a wood nymph, and came into the world with horns sprouting from his forehead, a goat's beard and a crooked nose, pointed ears, and the tail and feet of a goat. He had such a repulsive appearance that, at the sight of him, his mother fled in dismay. Hermes, however, took up his curious little offspring, wrapped him in a hare skin, and carried him in his arms to Olympus. The grotesque form and the merry antics of the little Pan made him a great favorite with all the immortals, especially Dionysus, and they bestowed upon him the name of Pan, meaning, all, in Greek, because he had delighted them all. Pan's life was defined by his relationships with the nymphs. He loved them deeply, he was dancing and playing music with them, and some of them loved him too. Others hated him and were running away from him. Very complicated relationships indeed. And his mother issues appeared soon enough. The spirit of the reed tree comes from a nymph. Her name was Syrinx. Pan was the one to cause her doom. He was in love with her and wanted her at any cost. He was chasing after her trying to make her his. So, in order to escape him, she transformed herself into a reed tree. She hid by the river among the other reeds but Pan would not stop there. He went down to the river and started ripping off every reed until he finally found her. He ripped her off the ground and started blowing into the pipes to get her spirit out. While he was blowing, he realized that beautiful sounds were coming out of the reed pipes. He decided to bind them together into a big flute and started making music out of them. Oh, and what beautiful music he made. From then on, he would never leave his flute and he would always play for the other nymphs to dance. In Greek mythology, love has the highest praise. Psyche, meaning, soul, in Greek, was an impressive mortal girl, surpassing in beauty even the goddess of love, Aphrodite. Her beauty was so well known that men from all over the land would visit her to admire her beauty. This made Aphrodite extremely jealous and decided to punish the girl. She ordered his son, Eros, who could make someone fall in love by hitting them with his arrows, to make Psyche fall in love with the vilest and despicable creature who walked on earth. However, when Eros gazed upon Psyche he fell in love with her himself. He could not carry out his mother's order and instead, he remained silent. The years went by and, despite her beauty, Psyche could not marry. All men admired her godly beauty but then would go on and marry another. Her parents decided to go to Delphi and ask for guidance from Apollo. The oracle said that Psyche had to dress in black, climb a high mountain alone and stay there. Then, a winged serpent would come for her and take her as his wife. Psyche and her parents had no choice but to follow the god's words. As she was waiting alone on the mountain, shaking and crying, the fresh wind of Zephyrus raised her and traveled her through the sky to the gates of a magnificent castle. There, a sweet voice greeted her and made her feel like home. Every night, Eros would come in the dark and lie beside her. Without seeing him, 
Psyche could feel that he was not a monster but the loving husband she had always been wishing for. The following days passed in full joy and Psyche was happy. However, she missed her family and felt sorry for them. He asked Eros to let her see them and he granted her wish, after warning her not to be influenced by them, otherwise, their relationship will be destroyed and she will suffer a lot. The next day, her two sisters, carried by the wind, arrived to the palace. They felt jealous of her sister living like a goddess and told her that her husband did not allow her to see him because he was the horrible creature the oracle had mentioned. This idea overwhelmed the mind of Psyche, who could not understand why her husband would not show his face. So, she devised a plan. She decided that when Eros falls asleep next to her, she will light a candle to see him. If he is a monster she will kill it with her knife, otherwise, she will happily fall back to sleep. And so she did. But, after seeing his face, a drop of hot oil fell from the candle and woke Eros up. He immediately left her, saying with a heartbroken voice, love cannot live without trust. Psyche was really sorry and sad, and she could not find Eros anywhere. Desperate, she appeared to his mother, goddess Aphrodite, and asked for her help. Aphrodite told her that in order to reunite with her loved one she would have to carry out three impossible tasks. With the help of nature and others, she managed to complete all the tasks and return to Aphrodite. Despite her success, Aphrodite got angry with her and yelled the poor girl that she would never let her go. Witnessing all this, the other gods of Olympus sent Hermes to tell Eros everything that has happened. Eros was touched by Psyche's love and returned to her. From that day on, the couple lived happily together. As a wedding gift, Zeus allowed Psyche to taste the drink of the gods, Ambrosia, making her immortal. Aphrodite was also happy because now that Psyche was immortal, the men would forget about her and worship once again the true goddess of beauty. If you liked this video and want to see more please support me with like and subscribe.